Welcome to the first episode of my podcast, and today we are mainly covering the season so far. And for this first podcast episode, I am here with a good friend and also someone I race with on F1 2017 and games like that. Niblo, say hello to everyone watching. Hello, it's uh, great to be on Chaz's podcast. As uh, as he's mentioned, I've been league racing in, with him for quite a while now and uh, helped him originally on his old channel get um, get get some things rolling with the winter testing. Yeah, he definitely did. Helped me out a lot, so thanks for that again. Um, and yeah, it's great to have you on. Now let's get into this podcast. And the theme of the podcast really is the season so far, because of course we have Spa in a week's time. So let's go through how the teams have really done. And let's start with the championship battle, Mercedes and Ferrari. I don't feel as though the battle has been as good as 2017. I think it was more interesting in 2017 because they were fighting closer, I guess, that season. And of course, you know, Red Bulls have got in and fought with those cars as well. So it hasn't been as good in terms of the battle between those two cars, but a very good battle nonetheless. What do you think about the battle so far? Uh, I thought this, this championship battle has been a lot better than 2017 as the Ferrari has actually been they're on merit instead of the Mercedes car not realizing its potential so much. So uh, I'd, I'd, I'd disagree with you on that point. Yeah, I understand. Um, I will say, though, it is good to see that Ferrari kept on it in terms of improving the car because I had a feeling going into this year and after pre season that Mercedes had that, I think, quarter of a second in their pocket. And of course, that's been proven wrong. Because I think by the second or third race, Ferrari were getting the front row in qualifying at least. So it is good to see that Ferrari have improved and have, especially the power unit as well. I did not think they would improve it by that much. And clearly now, they have the best power unit on the grid. Uh, Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Vettel, it's difficult to say with him. He's been kind of the same as last year. He's been very fast when he's, you know, led races. He's done well and controlled the race. But he's still making simple mistakes. For example, Hockenheim, Baku kind of, but I agree with him, you know, going for the move because he had to try and get the race win there and wasn't that great in qualifying in Hungary. And for Lewis Hamilton, I don't think Hamilton's been that great this season, if I'm being honest. Thinking about it, I don't think he's been anywhere near the level he was at back in 2017. And Bottas, on quite a few occasions, has beaten him. So Hamilton has not been as good. But because of Vettel's mistakes, that's why Hamilton leads by 24 points. What do you think? Yeah, I I definitely definitely agree on Hamilton not being as good as he has been in previous seasons. Um. I think it's only been since the the French Grand Prix that he's started to pick up his game again. As you mentioned, Bottas has outqualified Hamilton five times this season, and it's very rare for a driver to be um, doing that good in qualifying against Lewis Hamilton, who's kind of got the reputation of being one of the greatest qualifiers that the sport's ever seen. Um Vettel, I thought, had a very good start to the season. Obviously, got lucked into the win at Australia. Yeah. Um, great, great drive at Bahrain, managing the tyres. Um, but yeah, he's been a, being a little bit inconsistent, making a few mistakes, and they've been quite costly in the end, uh, especially um, at Austria when he um, impeded Carlos Sainz in qualifying um, and got the three-place grid drop. That that certainly didn't help. Uh, obviously, turned one at um, France, cost himself some some good points there. Although he did a great recovery drive, but um, apart from that, there's not much to say on those two. Good point you bring up about Vettel and Austria. If he had not done what he did, I think he would have won that race because he was I'm trying to think now. I think three seconds off Verstappen at the end of the race, something like that. So. 
Yep, costly mistake there. And of course, the French Grand Prix where he hit uh, Valtteri Bottas. But talking of Bottas and also Kimi Raikkonen, I think those two have definitely improved on 2017. Bottas, I think, has been more consistent, but has been way more unlucky than he was in uh, 2017. So many issues. Uh, Baku with the tyre failure. You have France, where he was hit by Vettel and his car was damaged and it completely destroyed his race. Austria, where his engine failed. Just so many issues and I do feel sorry for him. And Kimi, for me, hasn't been great all season. I think between Baku and Canada, I think it was, he wasn't that good. And I think that Kimi was more like the 2017 Kimi. But Australia, China, Bahrain and ever since France, Kimi has really stepped it up. He's been on the podium at every race since the French Grand Prix and... I think you'd have to say, Nib, Kimi, if he does keep his seat at Ferrari, and we'll get onto driver lineups later on in this podcast, if he does keep his seat, I think he does deserve it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree that Kimi should uh, should keep his seat at Ferrari. He's um, This is definitely the best we've seen Kimi for a good five years since uh, the start of probably 2013 yeah. when he was uh, with Lotus. Um he could have had a pole position a number of times this season if only he didn't uh, bottle the last sector or the final corner at China, Baku, also in Bahrain, I think. He made a mistake there. But with Bottas, he's, he's done very well to recover after his mistake in Australia. There's or, there was already a little bit of pressure on him um, because Hamilton um, demolished him towards the end of last season, but he's really done a great job in in giving Hamilton a really good fight this year and being super close to him in qualifying. I think the, the gap between them is less less than a tenth. So Bottas is doing a really good job and has certainly been unlucky and should be a lot, a lot closer and right in the middle of this championship battle. Yeah, I think Bottas has responded well after the crash in the first qualifying session and also after Bahrain, where he was criticised again for not going for the move on Vettel. So I think yeah. since China, up until Germany, let's exclude Hungary because he didn't drive that well in Hungary in terms of his defending and attacking. Um, very controversial to say the least, but <laughs> yeah, I think, he, uh, I think he responded well. So at least Bottas has improved because if he did not, I... Don't see how he would have kept his seat for 2019. But let's move on from Mercedes and Ferrari and go on to Red Bull. Now, my guest is, I think it's safe to say, a big Daniel Ricciardo fan. So I'm going to let him <laughs> rate his season so far. So go for it, mate. With Ricciardo, he had a bit of a shaky start to the season. Obviously, the speeding under the red flag when a, a piece of... I don't know, a piece of tarmac flicked up on the main straight and then he got a three-place grid penalty. That already compromised his first race in uh, in Australia, obviously where I'm from. I, I'd rate him 7 out of 10 this season. He had a very good start to the season. And since uh, Monaco, he hasn't been super the Red Bull drivers go through this swing. It, it, it's weird. Like Verstappen's certainly been on top since Canada. And Ricardo was comfortably on top before Canada. Bit bit frustrating the last few races, especially uh, Austria, where he had some good pace, but wore out his tyres. And then in Bahrain, where the Red Bull had some good pace and was comfortably in fourth before he had to retire when the control electronics went. Both Red Bull drivers been hampered by uh, reliability, sadly, and um, yeah. Yeah, Red Bull, th the first six or seven races, I think they were very quick, and I think people were underrating how quick they were. For example, in Canada, I think that was their best performance of the season in terms of pace, because I think with Verstappen, they were quarter of a second off pole, off a Ferrari, which in a straight line is way, way faster. So, 
Yeah, in the first six or seven races, Red Bull were very, very quick. And for Daniel Ricciardo, this is the thing. You say that he hasn't been as good since Monaco, but I think that's because Verstappen has improved. Because if Verstappen had been like he was since Canada for the first six races, then we might not rate Daniel Ricciardo's season that well because Verstappen may well have won in China. I think he would have. And also yeah. Monaco. So I don't think Ricardo has had that bad of a season. I just think he has capitalised on where his teammate has faltered, I have to say. What do you think? Yeah, definitely the more experienced Ricardo has showed and paid off this season and definitely helped him get those points over Verstappen, especially here in this early in the season where Max was making a lot of mistakes each race weekend. Yeah, I'd have to agree, but I have to say going forward for the rest of 2018, I don't see them winning a race, if I'm being honest, because Hungary was such a, a shock going into the weekend, and I titled my preview for Hungary, Red Bull set to dominate, because I genuinely thought that. I thought Red Bull would cane the rest of the field dry or wet, but then in practice, they didn't look that great. And then qualifying in the wet, and Christian Horner said this on the Sunday of Hungary, they were praying for rain all season. It came at the track they were hoping for, and they were miles off the pace. And then in the race, even though with Ricardo they did have good speed, it wasn't the speed we were expecting. It definitely was not. And with the developments that Ferrari and Mercedes are making in terms of their power units compared to the Renault in the back of the Red Bull. I think they'll be good at tracks like Singapore, Mexico, you know, tracks like that. But I don't think they have enough power to do so. But uh, considering the top three teams, what do we think is going to happen going forward for the rest of the season? So first off, who do you think, Nib, is going to win the championship Driver and team. Sebastian Vettel will win the Drivers' World Championship, even though he's quite a long way back now. He's come back from further um, when he came back from forty points after still after Silverstone to beat Alonso and to win the constructors. I'm going to go with Ferrari as well. I've been very impressed with Raikkonen, and usually finishes off the season a lot stronger than he does the start. So. I think Ferrari will win both championships. Interesting. Um, I am going to go for for the constructors. I'm going to go Ferrari because I think Raikkonen's consistency of getting podiums will get them the constructors' title. But for drivers, I've said this since the start of the season, and I'm going to say it again, Lewis Hamilton, because he has, yes, not been great this year, and... I don't think he's been as good as Vettel in terms of pace and his car is not as good as the Ferraris, but when it matters, when the pressure is on, I put a lot more trust in Lewis than I do Sebastian. And this kind of goes for Ferrari as well, not just Vettel. With Ferrari and Vettel, when the pressure is really on last season and at times this season, they folded. And I think that's going to continue going forward for the rest of 2018. And if Ferrari are going to win the title, then I think coming back from the summer break, Spa and Monza, they have to come back strong. They cannot let Mercedes and Hamilton win any of them, any of those two races. Because if Hamilton, say, won Spa and Monza like he did last season, then he's going to open up maybe a 30 seven 38 point gap which is catchable but you don't want to be trying to catch that going forward for the last you know seven races so the key for Ferrari I feel is starting strong after the summer break I, I definitely agree with that uh, Ferrari have definitely bottled the strategy a few times this season yeah uh, China by letting Bottas undercut Seb um, for no reason, really. Uh, Baku, they, they didn't need to pit Seb. 
His pace was good out front. They probably pitted him too early. Um, Spain, where well, they pitted him underneath the VSC and then he couldn't re-overtake Verstappen and cost him P2. You know, these these add up and at the end of the season, they could be crucial. So for, for Vettel to win the championship, Ferrari have to start delivering and using the pace of their car, which they have. They definitely have the slight pace advantage over Mercedes now after their recent upgrades that they brought, especially Silverstone, where they improved their speed through the high-speed corners. Uh, as you've seen in Austria, they were quite poor through the last sector, but they rectified that a race later. So that all credit to Ferrari there. But they need to really start taking advantage, and they would have in Hockenheim if um, <laughs> Seb had not crashed. It's, uh, it's true. It's true. I think, I don't know what's going to happen on the development side as well in terms of can Mercedes respond in terms of aerodynamic and power upgrades. I don't know, but I get the feeling going forward that Ferrari will have the pace advantage, but in terms of actually getting the results, Mercedes will be better on that front. But going forward, I'm sure it's going to be a great championship battle. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with a very special video. Also, don't forget to join my Discord server. A link to that is in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think about the topics we discussed. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.